Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 versus 2 on death row and in this one I'm going to be using the 7th Panzer Division on the Red 4 side. I've been wanting to show off the 7th Panzer Division for a little while now. It did come out a couple weeks back but I haven't really been very successful with the division. It's taken me quite a while to get my head around. So today was I'm going to be showing you a replay of a game that I played that was much more successful and also includes the new MI2. Yeah, we've got the MI2 in the game now. Uh, when the division released, the MI2 wasn't in the game, but now it's been added uh, retroactively. So uh, we do have these recon helicopters available to this division, which definitely help a lot uh, with spotting enemy forces. Uh, but at the moment there is this little meta in deploying early on with a lot of recon infantry at the start and kind of placing them further up to get like a head start against your enemies. So you can see Black T here is doing it with his Jäger Aufklader. I'm doing it with three of these Spezias Aufklader. Uh, I've got three of the MI2s. Uh, the reason I brought three, I only needed two really, but the reason I brought three was because they were new and this was I think the first time that I was using these MI2s. Uh, so I was making sure I had them in the game and well Look at that, pays off. MIT on the right hand side does spot the Black Hawk. We're also going to be spotting the OH58CS heading our way. Uh, behind these Specials Alcalar, I do have two sets of Pioneers in these SBW 70s. I've also got a Panzerjäger and a Modschutzen there as well. So this MI2, stunned by the first missile from the OH. I was going to be looking for a second shot in there. And my poor MI2 already taken out crashing down the side of the mountain there. Especially as I've got a, uh, one of them gets caught out in the open after its truck gets destroyed. Uh, but I'm just trying to run it off now. Do you manage to kill an M60 for free? I don't think my opponent was really expecting me to be that far up. Got the two MiGs coming in. That is very bright. But yeah, these MiGs, pretty decent for taking down helicopters usually. So in this case, I'm just using them to finish off the Black Hawk. Uh, but the Special Zalf Cloud is still doing really well. So my opponent's using ranges because we have the, the numbers here. We're able to uh, get the kills in. If he was, I guess, bringing them all up at the same time, then he might have a better chance against the Special Zalf Cloud. But in this case, I was able to you know, make sure that I killed off that ranger and then I can kill off the next one. Now currently in the game, there is uh, the confirmation of kills popping up. You can see that when a unit dies, like in that case the ranger died, it costs 65 points and so it shows it dying. Um, that is currently in the game. I'm not sure how it's going to stay. Like, of course, this is still early access, everything work in progress. Um, I do like it for destruction game mode, but I feel like in the conquest game mode it's a bit weird uh, to be able to confirm kills, especially with like bombing strikes, for example. If I were to bring in a bombing strike here or here, and I can't actually see the unit, and then I kill it, it will pop up with the points. Uh, but this is going to be like a mech rifle, I think, was just uh, harassing my SBW 70s in the tree line, because it did have line of sight. Originally, I was just thinking I would leave it there to waste these gems, but it was being pretty accurate. Usually, they like miss a couple, so yeah. But I mean, in this case, they weren't missing, so I was just bringing back the other two. All right, further back I do have the T-72 GM-1. This is one of the uh, better tanks. I think it is the best tank actually that the 7th Panzer Division can get their hands on. Um, and then I've got a Strela 10M covering that. I've also got a T-55 AM-2B, uh, which has an HGM that it can fire. So that's currently hiding in the, the bushes there. Very cool. Actually looks awesome <laughs> in, that, in that position. Very menacing. But yeah, most of the engagement at the moment is between my Spezia's Aufklare and anything that Black T is trying to push up on this right hand side. So he's trying to clean out my infantry from this tree line at the moment. And I'm what I'm trying to do is, is save any units that are getting too low. So the Spezia's Aufklare are getting down to two men there, this one down to three. Uh, my pioneers, they have now arrived, so they're going to be getting involved. And I'm going to be able to take out both those fire teams, which is good. 
AH1F though is going to be a little bit of a problem. I do have the Shilka that's in position. Here comes a bombing strike, Kate Chi shells coming down. One of my Spicias Alcala, the one that was low health, does get taken out. Big old bombing strike. Yeah, this Cobra is a problem because I don't have anything that can really deal with it right now. I see my mix came in again there, shot down the OH-58 that was up on the hill. So that Toe Cobra is going to be able to get its rockets on target, kill one of my pioneers. But I'm still having a decent time here dealing with the, the engineers. I think there's a little bit of like Miss Micro here from Black T. He's allowing his units to keep moving. And just like in Still Division 2, if your unit's moving, it takes more damage. So it's important to make sure that when you are in an infantry and on infantry engagement, that you are staying still with your infantry. Unfortunately for me here, I do get in myself into a bit of a weird spot. Uh, the Toe Cobra is able to fire at us with its Gatling gun. Look at that, spinning around on the front of that, it's really cool. So yeah, that's doing some damage to us. There's also the M60 firing at us as well. So I'm going to have to back off. And I'm going to be bringing in some more units. I have now got this Pioneer Fjord on the way. I've currently got a Pioneer Fjord capturing this sector, uh, Gregory. Uh, but I've got another one now coming in, which is going to be hopefully at some point sneaking up through the tree line here and jumping into this sector. Now finally I move up the Shulker. And that's going to be going ahead and annihilating that Toe Cobra. That works out nicely. And I'm actually moving my tanks up as well. I have like these two extra tanks. So these ones were already in on the field. I brought up a new T-72 GM-1 and a T-55 AM-2 uh, to help deal with the M60s that we keep bumping into. Uh, Panzerjäger do end up engaging the mechanized rifles there. Not a good engagement for them at all. Uh, the six-man squad really not equipped to deal with that. I do get stunned. I'm going to try and run away from that engagement if I can, keep them alive. And all of my units at the moment that are low are just running off into the hills right now <laughs> uh, with the intention of coming back round to this munition truck eventually. If I can get there, we can get them back to full health squads. We can send them back into the fray. And considering that a lot of these have already traded well, um, we're going to have like pretty much unlimited value uh, when it comes to using those infantry squads again. Um, now my Spezia Zavklada here did actually end up bumping into the LRS squad that ejected from the Blackhawk when I was shooting it earlier. I was really lucky with that. I brought it in on purpose, the Spezia Zavklada, to go find it uh, in the off chance that I might bump into it. It was very like low chance but yeah somehow I managed to bump straight into it. My poor T-55 here is having a bad time. Rangers do manage to take that out. They also took out the Shulker that was there because all of this infantry obviously running away left my front quite exposed and the infantry with their close range AT4s doing a reasonable amount of damage there. The AT4 does have 17 penetration which is pretty good for uh, an infantry AT weapon at the moment so yeah not ideal. T72 though easy pops the M60 it is now going to come under fire from the Rangers and you can see there Every hit is doing like 2-3 damage, it's actually disgusting. So I've got to be really careful, get my pioneers up here in the SBW-70s and the BTR uh, Moschutzen and then uh, you know I can kill them off. Stop them from being so much of a problem. At close range like that it's not so bad because as you can see I stunned the ranger you know. And so when they're stunned they can't fire back. Uh, but the BTR there, going to be helping out. Watch it's an unloading, cleaning them out, which is good. My MI2 did land over here just to get repaired, as it did take damage previously from a missile. More HE coming in. Cluster munitions coming in as well there. I think that was my Kub, yeah, <laughs> the Kub firing away back here. Used up all of its missiles as you can see. I didn't lose too much from that bombing strike because what I did do just in time uh, was I reloaded my infantry back into my transports 
so that I could drive them out of the way of that. And if the bombs did land, the HE is going to do a lot less damage to the vehicle than it is to the infantry squad. So, yeah, I was able to kind of avoid some of the damage there. Well, Shitsun are going to try and do a runner here since they're only on one, down to one man there. Here we go with the Pioneer Flam. I really like these Pioneer Flam. Uh, they were better because they could indirect fire before, but they've recently been nerfed, so they can't indirect fire anymore. But they're still good. They're still really good. I've got these mod shits and now pushing up. Nice push with the BMP1s. We're going to be jumping into this building, trying to break down these units that are in our way. We've got a large assault going on right now. and do as much damage as possible. Unload those Modshids in. And so far so good. Got three units of Modshids in here. They're doing loads of damage to this infantry. But here comes the bomber once again. These F-111 HE bombers were really rough for me. I did just about manage to dodge that. As you can see there. But no building for me to get back into after those bombs drop. That's for sure. <laughs> so, a quite explosive engagement as I forced my way forwards. I did lose two of the BMP1s, and I also lost one of the Mudchards, I think. But overall, pretty good trades. One of them is going to go down now to the M60. M60 is actually really good for taking out these uh, BMP1s. So, pops them nicely. It's a good old pattern tank firing away. I did bring in my own SU-22 M4s now. They bombed this area. At the moment, I was kind of in like a weird spot because I obviously I'm pushing up on this right hand side and it's working quite well. We, we're killing quite a lot of stuff. But there's an HGM squad here, or even a couple of HGM squads here. They were really, really annoying because I'm, tr I'm trying to clamp down on this area, but I can't really do it until this area is clear either. Uh, but if I can clear up both of these areas, then it gives me more of a flat front to use my T-72s aggressively on the sector. At the moment it's difficult because I'm clumping up a lot on this right hand side, which is making me very vulnerable to these bombing strikes, which is why the opponents are using a lot of those um, F-111s. Or MI-2 goes down. Fixed for nothing. <laughs> well, the MI-2s, like the recon helicopters in general, are really useful. Uh, in this case, I did lose uh, quite a lot of them. Uh, but I've got one hanging around back here. This isn't, like, forgotten about. I left it here on purpose uh, in case any infantry decided to flank us around these. Oh, uh, like, through the uh, trees here on the right-hand side. Nice kill from the uh, T-72 there. Pops the M3A1 Bradley. I've also now brought in an RM-70. But I believe I don't really use this till later on, but it's going to be sitting there uh, waiting for my command. Uh, two more cubs are on the way. I'm getting pretty annoyed about these F-111s, so I want to try and shoot them down. That's the plan. I do already have the supply truck up here, so I can use them to resupply the cubs if needs be. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just trying to get some infantry to sneak all the way up on the right-hand side so we can potentially cut off uh, reinforcements. And by doing so, can get better units into, or like better positioning in Dimitri. However, uh, the reinforcing road on this side is in fact here, not here. So units naturally come down this road as opposed to the right hand road. Another plane going to be going down there. Another SU-24. Taking out the sky. Bombing strike hits us again, taken out by my mod Schutzen. And here comes the cluster. Onto the, the F-16 cluster. I'm launching a lot of missiles there. Unfortunately, no hits. Well, we, we did hit the Raven once, I think. The Raven actually took out one of my curbs. Now I've got to be worried about Seed as well, which is obviously not ideal. Right, moved across the Species Alpala. It's going to be the recon to take care of any units that are on the left side. And I'm going to be making a push in 
with the SBWs here. So we're, we're making a an assault on that tree line. Try and clear it out as best I can. And the BZR 50PK drawing some fire there from the HGMs. We're going to have to unload since the Jaeger Alcala is opening up with the Panzerfaust. And the SBWs are going to go down pretty quick here. But we have managed to get infantry into that tree line, which is important. We've also discovered the uh, the, T the M60 here, which is going to be pushed on with the T-72s. I've got a lot of these T-72s. It's funny how the M60 like randomly fired at my Alcala squads that were pushing forwards in these Jeeps, rather than the tanks that were firing at them. It was a bit annoying for me because I did want the Afghan squads to be alive, but there were obviously more like better targets for him, I think. Another F-111. Kub did fire a rocket, but it went into the into the side of the cliff there. Right, here comes some F-4Fs looking for the Maverick kills onto my T-72s. Both of those are going to get shot down. We're looking for the kill onto that one as well, but that one's actually going to get out. So now, as I was mentioning earlier, if I can secure this tree line, I can push more aggressively in the open with my T-72s. So now these are freely supporting the advance of my infantry. Now this Specials Alfklada was actually an absolute hero because it managed to stay alive in the open here for a very long time, very close to the enemy, so I could actually see what I was firing at and allow targets for these uh, T-72s which were doing a fantastic job. You might also notice that I have the Specials Alfklada moving around the back here to get into one of these buildings to so again cut off reinforcements. And I've got my T-72s nicely spread out so that cluster munitions can't take out multiple tanks in one go. If there was like an F-111 cluster, it might have been a little bit of a problem because they could, like whenever my tanks lined up like this, they would get multiple kills. But yeah, nice clip there onto the Roland 3. That's 135 point AA, so taking that out very nice indeed. Right, more Schutzen. Going to be taking out the Chaparral. And we're really, really, really putting the hurt onto our opponent now. I'm even going to go ahead and try and get my leader in here, which I do, which is going to give us the plus two. Because so far, things have been pretty even. It's been like a really, really good game. Uh, but I finally kind of broke the camel's back here with this push. M60 does go down. We're currently engaging at Abrams. I do lose three of my T72s. And well, just as things were going my way, it's turns around very very quickly but we are in a better position than we were in before because I have infantry on this left hand side and therefore I'm not being flanked by you know HGMs and stuff. So bombing strike coming in once again. Kib's trying to do its best to shoot these down. Unfortunately we got two hits but on two different aircraft. Yeah. Very, very explosive fight on this right-hand side. But now I'm even more annoyed with all of this aircraft coming about. So I'm going to be bringing in four Stratus NMs. <laughs> so I've got two cubs. I've got multiple Stratus NMs. <laughs> I'm just kind of waiting for my infantry to now push up. And I'll bring in more tanks again and we can try this again. Now one thing that has been added in the latest patch for uh, Warno is the... Higher tier East German tanks, I think actually maybe even all of the East German tanks I do have smoke, so you can see I've deployed that smoke here to avoid the HGMs, uh, one from the Tow Cobra onto the T-72 GM-1 and I think the T-55 was also getting hit by something. I right, now I've got the rockets coming in, that's the RM-70 firing away that I had set up before. Oh, sounds so cool. The idea of this wasn't necessarily to get any kills, it was just to kind of pin down and 
harass the units here. So the M1 does go down and the M60 actually goes down as well. That was due to my T55 and T72 actually getting the better of that. Managed to just about keep the uh, Pioneer together alive. Then move forward the Alphaclutter. It's going to help deal with the Hamachas because got these two Pioneer squads in the Alphaclutter there as well. Now having a lot of uh, ground recon like I do right now is super important so that I can see these tanks that I'm fighting against. And also, you know, in this case on the left side, being able to see the reinforcements really important so that I can potentially transport snipe as well. But another M1 Abrams has arrived and it's doing some damage, some serious damage to my T-72. I was really hoping that my T-72 might be able to do the job there but I believe it missed its second shot. T-55 however does finish the job so that was good. Now my infantry moving through here on the right, going to be doing a good job. F-111 comes in with a bombing strike. Goodbye T-55 as a bomb lands right on top of that. There it is. Big old bombing strikes. Yeah, I'm still, like I say, I'm still in a recent, uh, decent position here. Like, as long as I know that there's nothing on this left hand side that can threaten my tanks moving up in the open I continue to have a good presence over the opposing flag and it gives me many more options especially if I end up controlling this area on the left hand side as to where I put my command which is still alive back here with like I'm down to one man yeah, more T-55s and T-72s arriving. And we're just taking on these M-60s on the main road. I was surprised to see so many of these M-60s and M-1s. Like, if they were M-1A-1s, I think I would have had a lot harder time. Because that's one of the big issues that the 7th Panzer Division really has at the moment. Is it's... It really struggles against heavy armour. A nice kill there onto the enemy aircraft. We also managed to get all of our bombing strikes off without any of my SU-22s going down, so that was really, really good. But I am going to lose that tank, that T-55. Now, I'm going to be doing something that I really shouldn't. And that's trying to rely on the BMP-1's missile to kill some Leopard 1A5s. Leopard 1A5s do have some pretty good accuracy. So, yeah. They're going to go down very fast indeed. Well, nice kill there from one of the BMP-1s at least. Now just got to take out the Leopard 1A5. Raid one shot, looking for the second. And there we go, T-55 gets the job done because it fired first. Our enemy artillery is coming in to try and deny my pioneers pushing forwards here. But getting into this compound is definitely a great thing. Raven's coming over. Going to be taking out one of my cubs. Goes straight over all of my Strellas. Unfortunately, the Strellas all miss. F-16 does kill one of my T-55s, I think. But does get shot down in the process. Now, Thunderbolt coming in. Going to take out two of my Strella 10Ms, but we're going to shoot it down. <laughs> it's just absolutely nuts. This game was awesome. I had so much fun playing it. Uh, Jaguar 2 actually getting an HGM all the way across there into another of my tanks. The thing is, this sort of messy playstyle I think is really the only way in which the 7th Panzer Division works. You've really just got to make your trades. You can't be like uh, the 3rd Armoured where you have like an M1A, 1HA and just like keep it alive and just kill loads of stuff with it. You've, you've got to trade your T-72s for the heavier tanks. So that you can progress with your other units, like your infantry. This is pretty much what I've been doing the entire time. Nice kill there from the T-72 to take out the Jaguar. Because, like, again, like this is a 160-point tank. We just took out a Jaguar with 170 points. Uh, and this is, like, the second best tank, I think, that we get in this deck. Uh, the GM-1 is, like, the best one. This is the second best. It has that 18 penetration, which is nice. And yeah, the idea is that you just use recon to spot your enemy armor first. And then what you can do is 
uh, basically trade because you have the penetration to get through the armor. Like this M1 Abrams has 15 front armor. The T72 needs like at least two shots of like super close range to be able to kill that. Bomber Strike does come in there, does miss the mark onto the Pioneer Fuda. M1 Abrams does actually get the better of my T72 and almost shoots my Strata, but I managed to get that out of the way. The other thing that was crazy about the uh, Raven not dying is I did have my Pioneer Fuda giving the extra veterancy to these Strellas. So you can see here this one's actually three vet. Alright, meanwhile back here, especially as I've cluttered going to be getting one of many kills uh, that are going to be coming its way. SU-22 is going in for the bombing strikes onto the M1 and I did well to kill that without losing any of the SU-22s. It only took a couple of bombing strikes to actually kill that. Yeah, check out this now. Especially as Avkala going to be ambushing these fire teams on the road. Already taken out both of the transports. Going to be killing off both of these squads because they're in heavy cover. The fire teams are like out in the open. He's trying to push forwards and clean them out. Look at that. <laughs> but yeah, that one's going to go down. The other one's going to go down as he gets in the building with them. Beautiful. And he especially has our brother. 65 points just took out two squads worth 40 points plus their transports and they already killed the high and yeah i'll take it so i'm going to be moving forward to the mushutsen again on this left hand side got the btr 50p gaze that are going to be spreading out to provide long range machine gun fire we've got the t55s now sat back but the whole time we've basically been contesting with the pioneer fuda they're hiding in the wreck of this building and I was hoping at some point to get another command into the left side of this. And while this has all been going on, Yagt has been doing a great job on the left of just kind of like holding the ground here. He's also managed to now move up on this right hand side, which has allowed me to be a lot more confident in pushing forwards. All well, the Shilka here firing away onto infantry. It's not something you want to see. Those mechanized rifles taking fire from so many different directions. And the F-111 coming in with a bombing strike. Let me trying to run my mod out of the way. <laughs> Just about managed to dodge it. Fine, right, if you're still alive. Now the F-16 cluster coming in. I think that was going for the T-55 there. Unfortunately, didn't get the kill. Those F-16s with the cluster munitions aren't very good. H-1F going to try its luck. That gets taken out as well. Multiple missiles just blasting that out of the sky. Alright, in moves the Pioneers. So the next step in controlling this sector is to get into the buildings here and if I can do that then I'm pretty much set at defending this and also preventing them from capping it as well and we know at this point that their leader is most likely either in the back side of this compound or in the tree line here so I've actually gone ahead and brought in two of these RMs. And they're going to be firing away. Unleashing their rockets. Either forcing the command to move. Or just straight up killing it. If it's like an infantry squad it might just die. And then anything that moves out of cover. I can potentially kill with any tanks that I've got nearby. Big bombing strike comes in again. Does kill some of my pioneers there. And the Raven is going to take a bunch of damage and get shut down. I believe the uh, Shilka is the thing that really got the better of the Raven there. Both the military police going to get taken out. 
I don't think I destroyed the enemy command at this point, but yeah, we definitely forced it to move with all that rocket fire. The rockets have also helped pin down the mechanized rifles. So in combination with that rocket fire, plus the little push that we're making now with these T-72s, actually working pretty well. And they're going to be able to get this second Pioneer Squad into this compound. We're now at a plus four, since we control this sector entirely. And Black T does have his units a little bit too far forward here, like the mortar, for example. F4F coming in with the missile. He's going to get shot down. It's another unit that doesn't really perform very well. 170 points. You have to get a side shot to almost guarantee a one-shot kill. It's not ideal. But yeah, Strella taking down the helicopter. Getting more infantry kills here. Just... Slowly but surely, pushing up, trading as best we can. This Jaeger here. Going to be able to do a number on my T-72 GM. Shouldn't have really let that die. I got a bit greedy. I think from a glance, I thought that these didn't have uh, much health. But turns out they had like eight men left in one of those squads. So my T-72 went down because of that. Like, I definitely like the cleanness of the UI that I have at the moment. You can find it if you go into, like, the label aggregation settings, if anyone's wondering. And, yeah, I, I do really like it at the moment. Oh, T-72 there, taking out the M1A1. Really nice. Shilka does go down uh, to the Seed of Groovy. But yeah, the labels do need a little bit of work, especially still, like, in the buildings, I think. But otherwise, the labels look nice. It reminds me very much of, like, European Escalation. But that's my rockets firing away again. we now got three of these bad boys firing away. And that's just to annihilate the... Uh, Jaeger's there. F4F does get away with a T-72 kill in the open. It's mainly because at this point in the game I was very low on AA. So I've only got like one curb back here and I think most of my Strellas are dead. Like I've got these two left. And they're not really in very ideal situations right now. Like this 2A3 is going to kill that one. It's a really nice flank there. Thankfully, Yag does have the unit behind there, but we managed to get a really sick side shot into that 2A3 and take it out. So, new command has arrived in the sector. We saw where that came in, so just going to be rocketing that straight away. we got seven minutes left on the clock in the top right. We're on a plus two. I'm looking at a win right now. Just trying to get more units into the compound. Uh, Tornado MW1 does come in with that cluster strike. It would have been really deadly if that had hit the SPW-70s. But because it hit my tanks, it wasn't actually that effective. But what I'm trying to do right now with these SBW-70s is just charge as far forward as I can, clear out everything on this compound, control it, and then I can kill whatever is, you know, left here, basically. Really just trying to get rid of the leader in the corner. T-55 charged forwards but bumped into the M1A1. So I think if Black Sea had used the M1A1s earlier, it probably would have been uh, much more of a worry for me. Because he was relying on the M60s and the standard M1 Abrams, uh, I was able to trade with them quite well early on. But you can see here how, how good the M1A1 is. It's just going to kill these T55s, and T55 can't even do anything to fire back. So I spot the Jägerführer. 
I was actually kind of flabbergasted as to how that survived <laughs> the uh, rocket strike that I put there, but <laughs> there we go. Villa 10M going to finish off that Thunderbolt, because it did run out of missiles. Oh yeah, big, <laughs> big dogfight going on right now. MiG-21s going up against Fighting Falcons. I think I had four MiG-21s versus the two Fighting Falcons. The Fighting Falcons shot down both my MiGs, or well, two of my MiGs, and two of them got away. <laughs> it was unfortunate. Not too great. So I'm going to be RTing that again, as you can see. These are getting relatively low on ammo. But these RM-70s, I actually quite like these as rocket units because they fire in salvos of 20 and you get four salvos per rocket unit. So I was able to just constantly hit this area like over and over and over again. And after every attack, I was making sure to move them. Also, you might notice that I've got two Pioneer Fielders in here now capturing this. And it's nice to have one on both sides because it's also giving the veterancy to the nearby units. In this case, the T-55s are now both three Sarvet. So they're doing a lot of damage to the high matches, some of their machine guns. Rocket there, going to hit the Jaeger leader and we take over the sector. So this is an example of where like the confirmation of kills it's kind of a bit cheesy, like I can see there specifically that that was the leader dying due to it being like 125 points. I did manage to get a nice couple kills onto mech rifles before they even unloaded on the left side here. That was great. Uh, that was like 90 points apiece for those two. But check out the destruction here. It's actually crazy. Yeah. We've flattened this area and you can see the, the craters from the rocket strike. Just crazy. F-16 coming in with the seed. It's going to miss most, both of its missiles. Almost hits my MI-2. We're going over the center here. That's going to get taken out by an eagler of all things in the end. And well, with us capturing the right hand side and Yagd getting momentum in the middle, going to be going to a plus seven now. I mean, just got to hold our ground pretty much. One of our opponents does surrender. That's pretty much it for this game. It was a pretty incredible game. Really, really tough fight on this right hand side against Black T. And really, really fun though absolutely brutal like trying to push forwards the the number of tanks that I did that ended up getting taken out you see like T-55 dead there T-72 dead there another T-72 the thing is with them being out in the open like this is you do need to make sure that they are spread out because otherwise you get hit by like cluster all in one go that's why it was so important to secure these left side tree lines Because without the flank secure, I can't just push out in the open like that. Here come more M1 Abrams, M1A ones, standard M ones. My T72 is really struggling to deal with that. Yang's got a bunch of Mi24s here, looking to come across and claim some kills. Game's going to be over any second. That's the tickets come in. And that's going to be it. There we go. 38 minutes, 38 seconds. What a game. 10,910 kills to 6,950 losses. We traded very well throughout that game. And eventually it got to a point where I managed to build up enough forces to make a couple of significant pushes into Black T's sector and eventually uh, win win the sector that way. So yeah, that was a really, really fun game. Um, especially as Alfklana did very well. Uh, managing to sneak that unit all the way around onto that road was really good as well. I believe it was this one. Killed the uh, Fireteam Laws and the Dragons uh, M113s. Also killed uh, Mech Rifle, Heimatschützen, and an LRS squad there. 
Uh, the Mochitsun did okay. The T72s, um, in this case, killing the, the M16 and the Ronin 3 is always nice. The Cubs were not that great. You know, they have limited accuracy, but they did get a few kills. As long as an AA piece is shooting down one aircraft, it's worth it, generally. So I did eventually get on top of the fact that I was being bombed quite a lot uh, and attacked by aircraft. Uh, so you see the Strela 10Ms did really well this one, uh, taking down two tow Cobras as well as the F4F and the A10. Uh, this one took down the F16 and the F4 there. A nice T55 AM2 taking out a Leopard 2A3 and the FRP Ronin 3. And then a T72 pushing forwards there, getting a few kills. Yeah, so all about just trading well, I think, the 7th Panzer Division. And this was a, just a really, really fun game. It allowed me to show off the kind of play style that I think that this division suits nicely. Uh, but yeah, the only thing I will say is I think there is a little bit of a problem at the moment with uh, income uh, being a bit high. You know, in a 38 minute, 38 second game, there's no way that I think I should be able to get almost 11,000 kills. That is ridiculous. That's like the equivalent of how much you get in like an hour and a half game in Star Division 2. So, yeah. <laughs> I think there there is still some fundamental issues with like the game right now. Well, I don't, maybe not fundamental issues, but definitely issues with like income and um, income balance and stuff. So it makes it very difficult to push if your opponent can just constantly bring stuff in, right? Uh, even though you're getting really good kills. Regardless, that is it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Warno replay it was a lot of a lot of fun to play and hopefully a lot of fun for you guys to watch um, thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the next video goodbye yeah,